All right, it is 10 o'clock and we're all here. So we'll call the meeting to order. If you would rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right, sir. It's time for public. Good. <laughs> Three minutes. Can I request help more? <laughs> no. Oh. You can. <laughs> uh, I'm with the uh, Convention of States, Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution. We're a nonprofit organization. We're nationwide. We got over 2.5 million uh, petitions already trying for it to happen for the states. What happens is you need 34 states to convene or two thirds. And uh, right now we have 19 states on board. The objective is like the ones I have already give you in front of you, the cards, as well as inf some of the information about uh, Convention of States. And uh, we when this started was in 2014, realized that things that had to be changed by the federal government because it's overreaching their authority. Uh, if when our convention, uh, convention happens, it will be Congress at that time says there shall be and uh, will be a convention state. Congress president, nor the governor have anything to say about it. Just one representative from each state is at, uh, at the convention. It got passed 38 at the convention, 38 individual states got to pass it. And it got to take going and uh, takes thir uh and 38 individual states got to pass it, and it takes 13 states and, and the whole process to uh, to make it uh, happen. May not happen. What happens is, is that it, uh, it'll be null and void. To me, it's just like getting trying to get uh, 30 uh, politicians together to agree, which is, ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? But it's a hard road. Uh, and so far, we've the citizens I've talked to to trying to get the convention of states, it, it's it's durable because each one is very much of a uh, a plus item because in reference to term limits, because what happens is when that commission ever happens, it will go down to some of the states, what's going on. Uh, term limits for politicians, they're in there too long. Truman says they go in as a pauper, poor person, they come out with gold mines. And he always says, I want to know where that gold mine is at. And, you know, it's insider training uh, and they forget about, they ain't going to, uh, there's semi- there's a bunch of uh, politicians that wanted to have term limits and unable to. Some states passed it, but what happened was that somebody cried about it and went to the Supreme Court, and it can't be done because Congress has to be, do be doing that because they ain't going to do it. You know, I mean, you ain't going to have enough to her. Okay. Remember, our Constitution starts here, goes up, not this. And this is where I see we're heading to right now. Uh, we're already in it right now, more so than you think about. You know, more and more control is going on. Uh, Next is uh, is federal budget restraints. Federal government should uh, never do what they have a blank check. Every country that has done this uh, has uh, turned, uh, what do you want to call, uh, socialized, have lost a lot of money, and they can't make the payments. They've lost and went under through history. Okay, give you an example. Sweden, who had a potload of gold, as they say, like an Irish, you know, and uh, in the 30s, they were very uh, uh, productive a country. And they uh, seen the other countries were going, maybe we should look at uh, being uh, socialized, worry, worry about the citizens, stuff like that. And lo and behold, it, it uh, went <clears throat> from a whole mess of money. It goes fast, doesn't it? Huh? Your, your time is up. All right. Well, uh, the reason why I'm here really is because this is where the government starts, and we're requesting states, I mean the city and the counties and townships, to submit a resolution to the uh, your representative and to the two speakers of the house that uh, you're for in favor of the convention of states. And I always say that there information's on your website too, isn't it? Yeah, but also too. But if you look it up on YouTube, you can see all these different uh, major discussions, uh, uh, major discussion from uh, lawyers to. Uh, well, you know, professors and 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 uh, constitutional uh, people, and, and they all agree it needs to be done. Well, thank you for coming. You drove a long way, so thank you for coming down again. I, I'm I'm dedicated because I want to see our country uh, change around and we'll get away from socialism. I'm against it. Thank you very much for coming. I'm a federalist. Thank you, Brian. Is there anybody online that wanted to speak? Okay. So we have an agenda and we have a couple um, additions. Oh, Madam Chair, members of the board, if we could add to the consent agenda a uh, 
excluded bingo permit for Pathfinder Village and an exempt permit for the Disabled Outdoorsmen USA. Motion to accept the I'll, I'll move the agenda as uh, amended. Okay. I can second. Is that JJ? I can second it, yeah. And then Madam Chair, I don't, okay, they are working. There's no light on on my mic. All right. Sounds. We've got a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. It's so weird to not ask for a roll call. <laughs> Um, we need to approve the minutes for March 19th. All of those. Thank you. Oh, and the summary for publication to Matt. Thank you. Oh, oh, second. oh go ahead. Thanks, Josh. We have a first and a second to approve the minutes and the summary for statement or for publication. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We've got minutes of board. We've got Department of Human Service Correspondence, the DHS Audit Review. And the Housing Redevelopment and Development Authority minutes, the draft, and the Pine County Surveyor's Report. I can move that. Thank you, Josh. I'll second. Thanks, Steve. Are there any questions on any of those? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And then we're to the consent agenda. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? I'll move it. Thank you, Steve. I'll second. Thanks, Matt. Yep. We got a first and a second. Um, once again, are there any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And we will move right along to Contracts, agreements, and grants. Oh, wait, no, down here, regular. Okay, Arna Township, the impassable road really would, um, follow up after our meeting last week. So we need to um, consider the next steps if we want to adopt a resolution. We want to schedule a special meeting for further discussion, request more information, or any other. Anybody have any thoughts on that one? Well, I think it was clear to me that, that it needs to move forward and I would make a motion to adopt the resolution. The resolution 2024-16? Yes. All right. Do we have a second to Steve's motion? I didn't hear what he said. I, I moved the resolution 2024-16. I'll second um, are there any questions on that motion? Um, Thanks, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, just, I, I just had a couple concerns about, um, the only real concern I have is what do you guys, I, I just don't want this to become a habit for townships to, if they get into something tough, they just want the county to take care of it for them, you know? Um, which I get it. I do understand. I got lost his phone. His phone is on the floor. Uh, oh. Um. Good eye. Thanks, Kelly. Which I do get why they're coming to us. It's a corner. You catch them. Why they they want us to do something about it? But I just don't. I don't know. I just hope that this doesn't come into something that you know. Anytime a time. I agree has with you on that. An issue they're going to come to us to solve it you know um which on the contrary to that i do believe and maybe kelly could answer this would this be something that countywide zoning would or if we had the zoning would maybe more take care of this or not i think the township is following the statute for the hearing and then all we do is tell the township to do the job so we'll see if they do the job or not that's the way I interpret what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then it'll, it must come back to us at some point if it doesn't happen in that time frame. So Yeah, in the resolution, it states that if they do not act within 30 days of their me mailing the notice, then we would go ahead and clean, you know, make, make the corrections. And Josh, to your question, I don't know that county zoning would solve this because it is a road issue. Okay. Um, and zoning doesn't deal with town road issues. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I... 
get what you're saying, Josh, mm -hmm. but I think I think this is what when they get to the end of their road, mm -hmm. they need some place to turn to, the higher authority, and we are the higher authority. Yeah. So Reese, my question for you is I know that um statutes are pretty general or they're or they're not general they're pretty explicit as to what can or cannot be done by the community board can you explain that a little bit for peace of mind does that make sense not quite <laughs> okay. so, so, i mean not anybody can just come to us for help for a road correct no i mean it, it would have to be townships and then they have to make sure that they they plead correctly the what's required in the statute so, um, I mean, for instance, we've had a, a prior petition on a different road and that wasn't properly pled, so we couldn't move that one forward. Whereas this one, when you've got the, what's alleged in the complaint and, you know, I looked through it and I know um, um, Rick looked through it and we found that everything was uh, pled in the complaint properly. So basically on the statute, we had to hear it. Okay. So not anybody from a township is going to be able to bring us their roads. Right. They um, have to go through the proper procedures and the proper steps, and it right. has to get to the end of their road, so to speak. Right. And then they bring it, they bring a petition to us because they have exhausted what they can do. Right. The way I understand it. Yeah. And from what I understand too, this ain't typical that a township would bring this to us, right? This would be more like a landowner or something like that, accusing the township of not doing their job. Where this was a little odd, I think this is just a township flat out scared for their safety and uh, can't find anybody that wants to go in there and do it. Totally understand what Steve, what you were saying. And I, I do get that. And, and I think with something like this, Hopefully it don't become a problem. We might just have to address it differently if it does. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's just my concern. So yeah, I, I not that I agree or disagree. I think it's valid, Josh. Or, you know, <laughs> if if the county went in there and did it, I would assume we'd have law enforcement and everything like that. But it would be county employees or. Do you think Could it would be, be a contractor? That, you're, that's my question. When I, that was when I was going to jump be, in. That would so, be my question also. So the reason the township hasn't done this is because they're afraid and the threats that are applied. So we can direct them to do it and say, you know, you, how do we keep them safe? Is Do we have a role in that when they, do we set up a time and just at least have a presence close by? I don't know. Because um, we're directing them to do it. But the reason they haven't done it to date is because of the threats. That's what I heard in the well yeah, in the testimony. Yeah, it was a combination of that and the what the greater operator just refused to do his job as a township employee. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where I mean, if we had an employee here that would refuse to do their job, I would imagine there's a a path of discipline. His was that was from fear though, because he didn't want his house burnt down. Well, and then they said they were friends. Oh, is what. But I remember in here, and, and then just all they have in Exhibit C here is the uh, the greater operator told the board he only maintained up the driveway. They really didn't elaborate, but yeah, during their what they were saying, it was threats and the fact that he was friends with the right. That's people. what I get. To agree with Josh, like not to make this a, a recurring thing, mm -hmm. you know, because they have their own government, yeah. they have their own body, they have their own elections. They, I would, I would think that there should be a level of expectation there that. They have to run that township. And and I would guess if they requested law enforcement, that wouldn't be an issue. I mean, they've requested it numerous times on yeah. on board meetings and stuff like that. So my guess is this they're not going to do it. It'll come back to us to right. do it. And then when that happens, it just obviously the county ain't going to take any precautions. We're going to go in there and do what has to be done. And so is that going to come back to us as a board or does it just go directly to the Madam Chair, Commissioner Ludwig. So the resolution as written uh, directs the county to proceed if the township fails to act within the time allotment. So then what is the level of they just move the piles and call it good? We would we would have to make a plan. Okay. 
idea. Come that, back to this group to make a plan, or would that be taken care of by the, the highway departments? The way the resolution is written, it's the last, uh, therefore be it resolved clause. If the work is not completed by the town within 30 days, the Pine County Board of Commissioners directs the county to take action to bring the road to a passable condition. And so my understanding of that directive would be if 30 days passes, then we would as staff uh, strategize for how to implement the direction of the county board and make sure that the resources were um, appropriately lined up and safety would be a, a primary concern. Yes, thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments on this one? The only, if I could, please. The only, only other thing that I, I've seen after looking at all this and understanding, I was under the impression that the Gander Trail, Gander Dancy, was only for uh, ATVs and such, but that is a it is a passable legal um, road you can use if you have a, just any regular vehicle. It is posted. So I, I guess just for urgency to get the obstruction, I think we have some time because you can still access past that obstruction. Well, they, he bought an, the DNR sold him an easement to go over right. to his property. He purchased it from okay because it's posted right on. There's legal postings on Gandy Dancer. You can drive up and down with a regular licensed street vehicle. So I guess you can you know yes it's obstructed yes but you can actually come the other way. Oh, and get, you mean drive down the trail? Correct. I don't yeah. know. See, it's ATV only most of the time, yeah, but they gave him permission posted. to cross from the street side. That's his easement. Yeah, it's, it is posted. You can drive, and it's heavy traffic. There's vehicles driving on it right now. Mm. I just found that as interesting. So it, it, mm. I think it buys some time, if nothing else, you know, where you can still get to the other side of that obstruction by going down the Andy Dancer. That would be my understanding if you're looking at me for oh. direction on that I because ATV might be an off-highway vehicles. Yeah. If you see a sign that has like a Jeep on it, it's not for general traffic. It's for people that aren't licensed for roadways. Or emergency vehicles. That was my understanding was he has no other way to get there except through that property, you know, through on that on Roy Street and then to cross over on his easement that he paid. And that's where he had to buy that easement. And, right. And the thing I was trying it, it's a it's a laid out road. It's been a road since nineteen. That just means you have to have a plate and, and you and can't ATV. obstruct a public road. Not a car. It's right. Pure and simple. Yeah. Highway license vehicles allowed. But not 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 standard motor vehicles. They're all off highway vehicles. Okay, I could share this with everybody if if anybody wanted to see it. It's just Posted on the Gandhi Dancer, it says permitted motorized uses, shows a snowmobile, an ATV, a motorcycle, a Jeep. And then there's a sign that says highway licensed vehicles allowed. So that's a highway license. And you have to actually drive on a highway to get to that point anyway. I think it's a side by just... side, though, or that type of thing. Not a truck, not a four wheel drive or a car. And then if you look at the tracks, I'm just I'm just saying it, it I think we have a little more time here because the obstruction isn't completely blocking it from what I understand it looks like you can access the other side of the obstruction legally you probably can it. don't have to buy a trail permit if you have a highway license yeah. so madam chair yes <laughs> now just to be clear as well this all all of it can be billed back to the township correct correct yes <laughs> here comes Kelly. <laughs> Yes, so Kelly Schroeder, County Auditor Treasurer. Um, so this is one piece that I'm not sure that the township fully understands um, because yes, we would send an invoice to the township for our cost should we do it. However, from the testimony that it seemed like the township believed then they could just levy a special assessment against that one property. Um, and the statute's very clear. They literally have to add that amount to their next year's levy. And if they don't, then I have to. So it gets levied, the cost gets levied on every single property in the township, not just the one. Where if they just go ahead and do it, then they could levy it however they'd want to, whether it's a special assessment or just as part of their levy. So I'm I'm interested once I explain that to them because I don't think that they have that understanding. So that if we do it, it everybody pays for it in the township. So with that, 
is there maybe some nonsense do we do we try to explain that to them before we do this or can we do this and then explain it to them and then they right take their my thought would be you do this and when i send them this notice i will make sure i include something that explains that and i did have a conversation with bob about that already and bob said that's not our understanding and i so i sent him the statute um to me the whole thing is a process we can't do anything until the township fails to do something after that right right, right. but you first have to officially direct them via the resolution. Any other questions or comments? Now we have a motion by Steve and a second by Matt. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. So then that'll be made clear to them when, okay, thank you, Kelly. Um, consent to vacate Meadow Ridge um, first edition flat. Thanks. <laughs> so again, Kelly Shorter, County Auditor Treasurer. Um, so we got a request um, from a local attorney to vacate Meadow Ridge First Edition plat. So this is a plat that was um, is in the city of Hinkley, and it was platted in the mid '90s, and nothing ever occurred with it. The streets were not put in. No city services were extended to it. Um, and as the attorney explains in his letter, the lots to today's standards won't be able to um, support like an on-site septic system. Um, and so the city is had, you know, told them, well, you either need to replat it or you need to vacate it. So replat it and make bigger lots or you need to vacate it. Um, and so they would like to go forward with the vacating it. Um, and as explained in the letter, um, it's actually a process through the district court. However, part of the petition in the district court is just noting that um, we are okay with it. So it's it's a little sad because it's like 60 residential lots and we need housing, but um, they don't work for what they need to be. Madam Chair, yes. obviously this is, is not uh, capable to hook up the city sewer. Right, the city has no, I don't know if it's ability or um, capacity to hook it up to city sewer. Um, so they would all have to be on site water and sewer and the lots are just too small for that. Um, so the people would have to buy two or three or four of them to be able to do anything, which would mean that they would really need to replat it and make those lots bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but the landowner just wants to be done with it and put it back to one parcel, get rid of the streets that were once planned to go through there and things. So I understand because it's happened before where people because they thought they were going to develop something and then the economy crashed in 2008 or whatever and and the guy said I I don't want to pay for this anymore I just want to I want to go back to the way it was and farm it and so we I I understand that so we just need to make a motion to recognize that is that yeah to consent to the vacation so that um, the local attorney john k back can note that on his petition to the district court that the county consents to it that's and doesn't I, oppose that's what i thought I'll, I'll make that motion i'll second that motion all right so we have steve made the motion and matt seconded it are there any other questions yes okay all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed all right, consent to, to vacate Meadow Ridge first edition is approved. Kettle River Upper St. Croix Watershed Management Plan. Hi, Mike. Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, I'm Mike Keener, your Land and Resources Manager. Uh, on February 20th, you uh, agreed to uh, pa pass forward the uh, Kettle River Upper St. Croix Watershed Management Plan. This a uh, plan that's going to bring $1.4 million into that watershed over the next biennium. Um, this is the, the next stage in that process. Uh, we uh, this went back to uh, for, for some comments. The comments were uh, responded to and approved. Uh, and then the only significant change, as it says in this uh, uh, report here, is that uh, a, an action item was added into the lake system to that allows counties to invest in geo permitting systems. So 
This is something that was brought forward by Carleton County. Uh, you know, again, this uh, under Bowser, they, they feel like Bowser approved this. They feel that this will help make uh, counties uh, more able to uh, to respond more efficiently uh, and, uh, you know, just be more effective when we're doing this, these kind of permitting things. But this could also help us. We could, uh, Pine County can take advantage of this as well and uh, utilize this in order to get our own uh, permitting system. So this would be uh, something that we could work with online and get a, uh, uh, be able to, people could uh, apply online for their uh, permits rather than what they do now, which is to fill out a PDF and send it in. And the system we have now works fine, and we would always have a system for people who weren't as technologically savvy, but this offers that option going forward. Um, the other changes were uh, minor wording and spelling changes. And so this is going to go before um, the, if, if we, you approve this and our other partners approve this, this will go uh, back to uh, Bowser for final review and approval. anybody have any questions for Mike or Matt? Is there anything that you wanted to add? I do not. I will move that. All right. My resolution 2024-17. Action by Matt. I'll second. Josh. Second by Josh. Are there any questions? I do have one, probably for Matt. I see Canabics on here. Have they been uh, participating? They want to participate? The SWCD is, yeah. Okay. Yes. The county at all or not? Board. Uh, no. They're not? I haven't. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Doesn't, okay. But, but uh, is it Kim? Kim is always there. Okay. Do you know, Mike, is the Canaba County Board on board with this or is it just soil and water? Uh, it's pretty much, I don't think the Canaba County Board is very involved in this particular plan just because they're, uh, you know, they've got just small, a very small section of it. Uh, but uh, I, I know, I know they're very involved in the uh, Snake River portion of uh, that which is of course accepted. okay thank you are there any other questions we have a motion by matt and a second by josh all those in favor say aye aye opposed motion carried thank you thanks mike so we have commissioner updates on NACO technology and communications the big thing right now is the reconnect program is they don't have any money for it anymore so um, they figured that it would be gone by April. Um, then you can apply and maybe have half of it paid for, um, but it's questionable how long that's even gonna last. So unless Congress puts more money out there for the reconnect program and reconnect just as a, a reminder, it's for the people that are low income so that they can have high speed internet um, in their area. So um, right now it's coming to a halt. Um, Arrowhead Com Counties Association. Matt, you had said you couldn't go. Did anybody make it up there for that? What's that? You had said that you could not go to Arrowhead. Did anybody make it up for that? Arrowhead? Yeah. I did not. Remember, I asked someone to. Right. Yeah. So I haven't heard no. Okay. Um, tour of Anoka Juvenile Facility. Um, that was really interesting. I was able to go with Judge Wynn and with Sydney from the attorney's office. And so to have two people that work a lot with our juveniles, um, it was really interesting to go see what they what happens. And we were when we were down there, there was a riot happening in one of the buildings. So um, we had to sit and wait because everybody had to run out and go help with the riot that was going on in the in the most um, secured facility that they had. So we were able to go through the other two and talk to a couple of the kids and just see what they do. Um, I agree with Terry 100% that we are very blessed to have those beds there. Did um, they show you the meeting room in the basement? Or yes. Have, yeah. Yep. Yep. It was pretty cool. Um, I, I remember Terry when I went there. I, I was about half scared. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I can't imagine being a juvenile. <laughs> You'd have to be have a pretty hard heart to not be thinking it's time to change my way by the time you went through in processing. Well, they had a 13-year-old young lady that went in there the day before or the night before, and they ended up putting her in restraints, and they had just gotten some new restraints. So you lie down and tie them in. Um, and then, you know, she, we saw her a couple times while we were there. And, and you just think, man, you know, I can't imagine having... 
those anger issues, you know, and that's what we're dealing with right now is a lot of those anger issues and, and it's getting younger and younger, you know, our kids are getting younger and younger that are dealing with it. So it's sad. Um, NACO Rural Action Caucus, I um, was not able to make that one. Public Health Advisory Committee, I wasn't able to make that one either. Um, I, that's, I think, when I was doing the tour of Anoka. Snake River Watershed was canceled. The Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative kickoff was canceled. Technology Committee is rescheduled. <laughs> you can tell I couldn't, I, we were on a plane, I couldn't get into it. Um, NLX, Matt, were you able to go? I did, I made it. Um, so the nuts and bolts were the legislative update was that there's not gonna be a lot of new money this year for them. So they have the 194 million from the state last year. Um, and MidDAT gave an update and they're, they're staffing up to do the reviews all over again because the reviews from back in the day were are old and outdated. And Not really much else. Oh, the, the other news is Lenny Bonander. Um, he he missed a couple meetings. You might probably notice that. Well, anyway, he had quadruple bypass. Oh. And they had to put him in a coma because it was he struggled afterwards. But he got better. And at, at the time of this meeting, they suspected it would be another week to two weeks. And he'd be able to, then he has to start therapy and be able to come home. So. Wow. Yeah, just so. Um, but otherwise, it's just moving along like NLX keeps it moving along. So. <laughs> I hear ya. Um, Penn County Housing and Redevelopment Authority, Economic Development Authority. You want to start that? Sure. Let me start. Matt, jump in anytime you see. Uh, well, they, they did a rail service study um, for any type of businesses or anything or, or uh, any kind of large, I suppose it'd be targeted probably towards logging and stuff they mentioned, but any business for uh, providing rail service, they talked about one site was right down at uh, Mission Creek, right next to the uh, recycling center somewhere in there. Um, and then uh, what else we talk about? Um, the new apartment building purchase, there was some question on uh, whether to, to finance it or use the, the cash the county has. And then, uh, the HRA EDA uh, voted to give an additional seventy-five thousand by loan, and the seventy-five thousand was grant for the rock. Seventy-five from the local housing thing, and then seventy-five from the revolving loan. Revolving loan fund, housing, yeah. and that couples with the forty-eight or forty-nine thousand from last October that was given to them by grant. Um, that was a three-to-one vote on that, with one. HRA EDA voting member opposing. Um, from what I understand, it was just a simple looking at the numbers compared to this big building right over here next to the courthouse. That's 90 units with uh, also has underground heated parking, a lot of, you know, better amenities compared to a 31 unit, uh, which is going to be $16 million in the city of Sandstone. And this big, beautiful one next door was only pushing 17 million. Um, so that one in Sandstone turns out to be 31 apartments for $516,000 per apartment. I think that's why the was really the reason why it was a three to one vote on that. Just seems like a lot of money being spent. Especially, you know, when there's a lot of other smaller projects throughout the county that could be, that could be impacted by this, you know, smaller duplexes and fourplexes, possibly in other cities, townships around the area. Um, what else, Matt? I I would go um, back to the rail study. They also included the um, the industrial park in Sandstone as part of that study. And the interesting to me that came from the study was they had, they said there was a, a forest products business in northwestern Wisconsin that wants to get access to the rail for wood products. And two, there's three products they said that they that up out of that area, they studied the circle where there is no rail access from, it goes all the way up to Carleton County and all the way down to, it's a pretty big area. And two of the products were wood, um, chips, 
Um, that company in Northwestern Wisconsin wants to ship chips all over the U.S. And, and if you have distance, it's way cheaper to load cars. So, and there's simple ways to create where you could just, you know, load a car fast and have a very simple site that could do stuff like that, you know. And then, then the other one was uh, um, lumber, and I don't know who that was. And the other one was recycling products. So it's interesting. So the, the interesting thing is, is they, uh, Burlington or BNSF or where, you know, where they are, if they get the numbers that who would commit to whatever X number of cars or whatever, that's the way that works. So um, I don't know who does the outreach, to, but I know even Carlson Timber has just piles of chips and he dies his own stuff like that. So, and I, I didn't reach out to him. I was going to after this meeting, I just haven't had time, but I'm going to, to just see, you know, would, would he be interested in committing to, well, Hey, I can fill three cars a week or whatever, you know, I don't know where his market is, but I don't know how that works. So, but it's an interesting, it was an interesting point. He used to haul his down to St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See short haul though. I don't know what that trade-off is. I don't know what the, there's a distance where you can move it with a semi cheaper than a train. I don't know what that number is, but. that That's what the rail study was about, right? Right, right. Did they identify other than wood products, anybody that was looking for a rail head? Not, not that I recall. I just. No, I asked some it. questions. I By North Branch, I know there's, yeah. they're actively trying to advertise that selling the parcels in that industrial park that's been vacant and yeah. right for how many years now and uh there's and no then, action going there you know that's even closer to the metro no there was some talk though how could that short line contribute to a stop yeah. if there was that mission creek you know the scally line or that whatever you want to call that one so um anyway and then uh they had their audit um, which went through, which is good news from the couple of years ago from when where they, they took over. And it was, they got a, no, 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 no uh, unmodified opinion on their audits. Other than that, I think that we gave you the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I'm Central Minnesota EMS. Oh, that's me again. Um, so... I gotta catch up here. So forty-seven thousand dollars remaining in the naloxone fund. Oh, the new chair is uh Steve Barrow out of Crowing. And uh, Ron Noonan is the vice chair. So uh, there was a a couple of things that were happening in there. The Lucas devices, I don't know if that's where the ambulance services are looking at help to buy the Lucas devices. And they had three applications come in. And this, you know, this is kind of what it's for, but um, the Lucas device is the thing that clamps on a backboard around it. So you got that hard service and it just does CPR and the people can just all by, it does it all by itself, just keeps the compressions going. But they're like $18,000 a piece. Um, so they, we, that discussion, and it was approved to help them out, out of uh, the funds there. And then there was, it was funny to me because the, there was a, there was a, another people that sent in to, or they applied for training dollars and they have a, a, I think it was 15, they want to, 15 people they want to train up to EMT and above level. And they wanted funds for that. And I said, you know, I jumped, that's exactly what we're here for. You know, that's what this whole system is. So they, they approved that also. And then there was the legislative update there with the 120 million that was given to the ambulance services as one-time money. And it's not really going to assist this so much as during that COVID era of years that um, the cost to deliver the service that was delivered to these people on Medicare and then the reimbursements were less than 60%.
So they figured they had to do, they, so they just gave them a one-time shot at, uh, to, to cover the state and the ambulance service. So, so that, that's, you know. and. Are they gonna be able to do what they need to do with the one-time shot? What's that? Are they gonna be able to do the things that they need to do with one-time money? There, the the art the deal there is you have to it's negotiated stuff you know but, but so it's it is what it is but yeah they're gonna keep working on that because it's how do you how do you keep running a thing if you keep going backwards that's the problem so the state's well aware of it and that's pretty much it um, I'm gonna go back to the NACO technology. Um, I had the wrong one, the reconnect program, and it, it's a grant program and a loan that you can get. And that's what they were talking about. But they were also talking about the affordable connectivity program, which is the one where it helps the people that don't have it. So um, those were the two things that they talked about at the meeting and I had the wrong ones. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> and then we had the AMC board meeting was canceled because it was Good Friday and people wanted to go to church. Um, and Steve, you have some others. Yep. Uh, Lakes and Pines um, got moved back a week because of uh, some training that was going to go on. So we did a we did our regular meeting, which lasted about an hour, and that included our audit report, which um, went well. Um, it, Lakes and Pines have gone through some um, because of staff changes, new fiscal people. And so the audit has taken a little bit longer than normal, but everything does look good. And then we did uh, some training, mostly for our board uh, to understand what each department did. They had department heads come in and give a, a little synopsis of what they, yeah, that, that was good. And then there was some general training on what to look out for in audits and that kind of stuff. It was all good, all good stuff. Uh, so that was last Monday. And then uh, I went to the, in the ECM board, which is the emergency. It used to be called the Northeast Regional Radio Board, but uh, it's gotten to be much more complicated than that. I was, I was telling Matt, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm flying in a little Piper Cub and they're talking at F-22 speed. Um, they're at 50,000 feet going 900 miles an hour and I'm down here trying to grasp what they're talking about. I, I, I'm looking over at Ryan thinking we need to have um, somebody from his staff involved more in that because it's all technical issues now and and the thing that i gathered out of the whole thing is um as we switch to the next gen 911 system it's all great and and we've been using these to make our 911 calls but it actually gets dummied down to an analog system the good thing about analog systems is is they're a little bit harder to breach uh it's not a big target. So people have left them alone. But when we, cybersecurity is an issue for everything. And now as we jump into that next thing, that's going to be a, a target for them. So um, I think we need to make sure our technical staff is highly integrated into what we're doing with all of our consoles and all of our cop cars and all, you know, I'm looking back there at Jeff and I don't know how you guys keep up with all that stuff because it, you got to be a cop and then you got all this stuff in your car that is, it wasn't there 10 years ago or 20 years ago, or even maybe five years ago. And now you, you're expected to be running all this stuff. So and our, our people in dispatch are the same number of people, but they've got a lot more stuff going on. So I think we just have to be aware of that. There's some legislation actually that's coming down. I don't know, Ryan, if you've heard about this, but they're talking about um, actually a certification for IT folks that work 
in the armor world and stuff and uh, I don't know where we're at with that or I, I couldn't even comment. Uh, they're talking about uh, now going to indoor mapping of schools so that that would show up on the guys. I don't know where it would show up. <laughs> Have you heard, heard of that, Jeff? Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like, you know, if you if there's an incident at a school, that that school would be mapped so the people going to help the school don't have to go in blind they would have the map well, but when you go to a school and there's you know 10 doors which right. door do you go to you know, right it's like so yeah so, superstitious with it uh and then of course the armor funding uh we paid for a lot of this this these armor systems with the 911 money that shows up on our monthly telephone and cell phone bills um, the money the money uh, as we all know the money has takes a lot more money to buy that equipment now than it did 10 years ago but the amount of money being collected isn't changing so with you know we gotta we gotta crack that nut some somehow it's not been on our amc radar very much unless you're in the probably your committee matt if you've talked about it there at, at public safety yeah you know it's it's uh there's... i forgot to mention something too um it used to be the ams rb board that ran at the state level for the that that's been disbanded or now it's going to be the emergency medical services and there's going to be three different groups underneath that that the governor wants to do it that way so same job just broke down so it can be managed better i think yeah and, the, and then on uh friday i went to uh the groundbreaking for um a new housing unit that's going in um, just south of the theater in hinkley uh, and it's uh, it's put together by our, our friends at the at the tribe, and uh, it, it was a pretty good ceremony. Um, uh, the city of Hinkley, Don Zeman gave a, a, a really good talk and and talked about uh, their housing projects that have come to fruition. Um, there's always developers there, always. Bit, um, pushing ideas and wanting tax increment financing and stuff. And then and when corporate ventures decides to go ahead, they know it's going to get a project in the ground. And so there's a 40 unit um, <clears throat> apartment style building going in with from one to three bedroom apartments. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, um, did Donnie say what's happening with they were going to be putting in some um, housing on the other side of the freeway. That, that's on hold right now. Okay. I talked to them offline about that. One. Okay. And and they're they're looking the the financing things aren't lining up for that group right now just because of uh, interest numbers I think and so uh, they're still hoping it'll go through but it's it's not. I think, isn't it the same builder that has yes. this here too? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they're not they're not getting these rented out as fast as they thought they would be Well, it depends on who you talk to. Okay. When we went we went there, David and I went there a week or two ago for an open house they had and and the local people are happy with with the progress being made. The corporate people of course went at full yesterday. Yep. It's but their money, it's, yeah. It's yeah. It's getting there. Um, and then there was a township officers meeting last Saturday, and JJ and I went, and, and uh, they are what they are, you know. Um, anyway, um, they missed they missed Reese, but <laughs> Jeff was there. Jeff took all the time, so. <laughs> I thought I had them talked in, out of doing it during spring breaks and MEA and stuff, but I guess I didn't have them talked out of it enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, are there any other others? Right, we've got.